what I do now at my new senior security analyst position. The same shit that I did as a junior analyst. But now I'm expected to know what I'm actually doing and not f up anything. I had to think of an analogy, because as you know, I like analogies. My day to day now is just like before. Making sure all the pooters, servers, networks, emails, and of course, people are safe. Sometimes I feel like everyone I work with is an idiot. And by sometimes, I mean all times. And not just in one environment, but several. And now I'm held even more accountable for anything that I overlooked. Nice. I have to investigate alerts, provide remediation steps to the company we're providing security service for, if it's sus activity. Malware detected on an endpoint? Yo, delete that shit. Pups installed across multiple endpoints? Yo, delete that shit. Ransomware detected on a DC? Yo, I'm on vacation until the first. You get it. There's a lot of alert signals going on. All of the commonly used security tools have hundreds, if not thousands of these alert signals that are both signature based and machine learning based. But more importantly, is every endpoint covered by these security tools? Is something misconfigured, leaving a gaping hole in their environment that a hacker could have used for not only initial access, but also evading detection entirely? Is something not updated and has a publicly available exploit? If you wanna see how bad the situation can get from bad to worse by simply not updating simple patches, then check out my last video. Now the senior part of my new role now goes beyond handling alerts, I now have to think think big picture as an overall security posture for the entire organization, which by the way, the CISSP does a damn good job of covering and it gives you that big picture understanding that you need when you start moving up in the ranks. Oh, if you want to know exactly what I do though in my day to day, now that I've moved on to a different position, well, here you go. I drag myself out of bed 15 minutes before the start of my work shift. I immediately go make some coffee. Mm. God damn, Jimmy. This some serious gourmet shit. Two shots of espresso, which I think equates to about four shots, and go over every alert that came in overnight. I make sure that nothing is overlooked by the other analysts, and I go over any that have still not been addressed because this is still a large part of my responsibilities as a senior security analyst. And as it turns out, I haven't yet transcended the need to actually touch these alerts, but I'm working on it. Now, once all the investigation steps are documented, this is probably the longest portion of this responsibility. You gotta make sure that you prove you checked all the shit, <laughs> picked out everything, right? And that something didn't get overlooked. And once all the investigation steps have been documented following the playbook for the associated alert type, I either close it out as benign, as in it's a true positive if it was under different circumstances, but it's fine in this case. False positive, as in, nah, security tool, you got this wrong. Tune your shit, which some security team have a dedicated alert tuners in the form of threat detection engineering, which is what I strive to be, or the analysts tune it themselves, which I also do currently. And of course, true positive. Gotcha, bitch. In which case I reach out to the appropriate IT team to remediate the endpoint via file cleanup. Yo, delete that shit. System re-image, giving the user a stern talking to, saying that, hey, if you do this again, you're fired. You know, typical remediation. Now alerts are my priority, of course, from my nine to five. If I'm in a meeting and something pops up that clearly needs my attention on, then I immediately jump off the call and I check it out. <laughs> <laughs> Which leads me into another massive time sink in my workday. Meetings. Meetings with other analysts to discuss investigations. Meetings with IT teams to discuss alerts. Follow-ups on remediation. And probably the largest portion of these meetings is discussing improvements that can be made in their environment. Because most of the companies we provide support to as a quote-unquote MSSP are not where they should be from a security standpoint. <laughs> Shocking, I know. To give you an example, automatic updates. You'd think this would be enabled by default, but one of the biggest exposures a company faces typically that I've seen, is that their software and devices are not kept up to date. And without proper patch management and update policies that not only push these updates, but test them as well. Broad strike, I'm looking at you. Updates don't get deployed as soon as they're available. And hackers have historically abused these unpatched systems to break into everything. So these meetings more or less turn into project planning meetings and change management sessions, where we discuss what needs to be fixed and addressed in their environment. Making sure to address the actual business critical security risks versus the minor whatever's like update this random software that one person uses is where the real experience comes into play because if you don't know what is actually a major concern versus a minor concern you're potentially leaving yourself exposed for longer than you need to be and if i had to break it down ice, ice, baby. all right stop
and I'd say about 30% of my work week is working on alert investigation and documentation, which includes tuning playbooks and alert signals to reduce false positives. 30% is meetings. This is sometimes closer to 50%, depending on the week. I wish I could reduce this down to 0%, but this is the name of the game. But the basic rule for the meetings is that if somebody's in a meeting and finds that this meeting is not helping them in, in, in a meaningful way, and they are not contributing to the meeting, they should just leave. Just get up and just, just get up and pack. Just get up at night and walk out. All right. And the remaining 40% is working on security projects and of course self-improvement, which not a lot of companies provide this. So if you're not doing this, companies, take note. Now this includes stuff like studying for certifications, you know, self-improvement, you want to learn more about your security stack, get certified in the tools you use in your security stack. That makes you an overall better employee and a better incident responder, security engineer, what have you. And of course, researching configurations because tech is changing rapidly and keeping up with it requires a lot of researching these new changes. Now this researching can be for things like implementing software restrictions, blocking not approved software, integrations for managing personal devices in a way that of course employees are comfortable with. Because most of the time, employees don't want to install something like MFA because this is my personal device. Like, well, too bad. <laughs> At a certain point, you just, you got to force some policies on people. Because personal devices are a massive exposure because companies cannot typically install their security monitoring tools on these personal devices. And why would they? They're not company-owned devices. This also includes building out existing security tools like EDR, SIM, WAF, email policies, what have you. How to best configure these to achieve what you want it to do. And then also troubleshooting. Why is this policy not actually blocking and doing the thing that I want it to do? It's not always immediately obvious why a policy isn't doing something that it seems like it should be doing. This requires a little bit of digging, a little bit of research, and a little bit of testing, which is very time consuming. And that's it. That's basically my workday. I'm either frantically investigating alerts or manically researching, studying stuff that I have no idea how it works. And that being said, I'd like to take this opportunity to address the elephant in the room. Wow. Okay. You know what? You know what? Here's, first of all, wow. All right. I can't even. Ugh. Imposter syndrome. I can confidently say I've never felt this more than I do right now. My last job, as some of you might know if you've watched any of my videos, was easy. They had their shit together. They had all their ducks in a row, mostly. So keeping things secure was easy because there was defense in depth already put in place when I got hired. Multiple robust security tools. We're talking expensive ass security tools. CrowdStrike does not come cheap. Well, maybe a little cheaper now. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, they gone done f***ed up. I'm guessing that my previous enterprise-sized employer were using enterprise licensing. So if you say have a thousand endpoints, that's over a hundred and eighty thousand dollars a year on just one security tool. And that's not even including probably the Falcon Overwatch or the additional bundles you can get with it. We had two EDRs, a SIM, a WAF, an email protection gateway with AI built into the email filtering, robust firewalls, hardened servers, with monitored virtual machines being deployed to contractors that wipe after each session. It was an expensive ass security stack that not a lot of companies can swing that ultimately made all of our lives as security analysts very easy. We were so spoiled as analysts. Automatic remediation was done for most of the alerts and we just had to confirm that nothing was missed and the worst case scenario that i ever really had to deal with was sending a re-image request to the appropriate technical support team who then handled the rest of the work i literally just submitted a ticket and i was fortunate enough to not have to deal with any major security breach or incident during my time there it was usually very clear when something was overtly malicious or actual unexpected behavior because we had so many sources of telemetry coming in that we could very confidently assess activity and when i joined the security team all the security problems that most businesses face as far as their overall vulnerabilities and security concerns that need addressing were almost non-existent. Endpoints with no security tools? None, none of that. Everything was locked down. Automation was very effective in auto-closing alerts and auto-remediating left us analysts with a lot of free time. So given all that, I didn't really get any opportunity to feel like I had imposter syndrome at any point in my job because the job was so straightforward that it almost felt like I was back at help desk resetting password. Oh, you click this phishing link? Reset your password. I'm notifying your manager too. Now the security tools provided explanations in the alerts and where to look for confirmation of malicious activity. That it was almost like completing guided lab assignments every day at work. My imposter syndrome now stems from my lack of knowledge in the configuration side of things, as in the security engineering side of things, which is ultimately where I want to be in life. But currently I severely lack knowledge. I don't really know how to deploy EDR entirely, what policies to configure, what issues come up when you're deploying different security tools to different operating systems. 
systems, how to set up log forwarding to your SIM, and how to really configure any SIM at this point. Now, it's one thing to understand alerts, the logic behind why the alert generated in the first place, and what type of activity it's actually trying to find. What in the matter attack framework do we got going on here? But at this point in my career, the alert ticket jockey stuff is just simple, which is why it's one of the true few entry-level positions that you can get in cybersecurity. If you're a quick learner, which I think I am, then you'll likely get bored or burnt out, it's 50-50 really, with the work after about six months to a year at pretty much any given junior analyst or SOC level one position. And I've already made boatloads of videos about what you need to learn to get into the junior roles and it still hasn't really changed. And there is conflicting points on this subject that say you need to learn coding intimately because ultimately, more or less to their point, that's what you're defending. Software on endpoints. Someone downloads malware, it compromises the operating system, which in and of itself is software. But realistically, security tools should be put in place to know about the in and outs of the operating system. Every little bit, you really only have to know the fundamentals of how operating systems and software work, you know, the basics. Beyond that is just understanding the security tools themselves and common tactics and techniques used by bad actors to break into everything. All these old IT farts telling you you need to know coding intimately are either living in the past cybersecurity world, we're talking pre Y2K, or they're so far removed from how far cybersecurity has gone and evolved and separate into hyper-specific niches. You need SOC level one analysts handling the low priority shit that requires basic knowledge of computers and threats. Just like you need people ready to reset passwords at help desk, you need someone with eyes on all these malicious URL clicks and phishing emails and resetting passwords if they confirm that the user visited the second stage of the credential harvesting campaign. And I mean, yeah, you could automate it eventually, but new credential harvesting websites are spun up pretty much every day and AI is great, don't get me wrong, but we've got a long way to go before it can do everything that a junior analyst is expected to do. So a word of advice, if you wanna become a senior security analyst, or even if you're trying to get that first junior analyst level role, continue your learning. The grind never stops. Technology is changing, threat actors are adapting. You'll never get bored, but you can sure as hell get left behind. Yeah.